resin art's about to get weird. It really does look like some strange organism thingy majiggy me. Like really alieny. Is that a word? It is now. Right, we are back and things are going to get a little bit crazy with this new technique that I have shown you. Now, jewellery. We've seen the pyramid in the previous video. Let's talk about jewellery. Now, I just had a little try at this. The idea came and it's absolutely incredible. Let me show you what I did. Again, it may not be to everyone's taste, but use your imagination again with this one. We're going to be dusting. Let me show you. <laughs> again, I'm using just the black this time, the quick drip UV resin from Resin Rockers. Really is a thick and gloopy. I'm struggling to squeeze that out. I could warm it to lower the viscosity, but I don't want that. I want it to be thick because again, we are adding the PVA glue to this. For those who haven't seen it, it is just Elmer's Clear PVA glue. Normal white should work as well, just experiment with a small amount first. Again, just that tiny drip on the end of my stick and mix that in. So when I say we're gonna be dusting, many of you have dusted resin before whether it be with mica powder, interference powders, chameleon powders, neon powders. There's lots of different ways to dust your resin. What we are going to be doing is creating almost a bionic look, I think. It's very organic, very strange, alien looking. And I've just got a, a mold here. That's all I need, really. And I'm doing the same as what I did in the pyramid video. Where's my UV torch? There it is. And I am randomly going to be just placing, and it doesn't have to be tidy again. Look how stringy that is. Just going to be randomly drawing the resin onto this mold. Now, the more layers you add, the more depth you're gonna have, but we're gonna need to be able to cut this as a sheet afterwards. What we're doing essentially is creating like an inlay. Would you call it an inlay or an insert? Now, you can go as thin or as thick as you like with this. Just make a mess, just have fun. That's what raising art is all about. Having fun and exploring, but without creating too much, too much waste. We don't like waste. So we are just going to be making a mess and having some fun, random fun. Look at it, it's messy. That's all I'm doing. As always, massive shout out to my channel members, anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks. And then cure it. You don't wanna over cure it because otherwise the dust inside of things is not gonna bond properly. But once you have that base there, you can then build up more of a 3D design over the top. But just be ready with your light. You don't want it to self-level. Right, I'm gonna continue making some crazy designs. If you keep the light on it as you're doing the designs, you're gonna get more of a 3D, 3D effect. Like so. Now they just look like dodgy splatters of absolute pure mess, don't they? Now I'm going to be using this area here, I think. So you've seen me use these so much on my channel. I do apologize if it gets a bit boring. These are just nail powders, similar, very well, the same as interference powders, really. I'm just going to take a clean brush and I'm just going to dust all over this piece. Look at that. 
some parts I haven't cured enough, but I'm going to continue. Just dusting that over. And this is where things get really interesting. This is where it looks very, very alien like. Focus. And you can you can change colors. I could go over slightly in certain areas. I'm gonna go with a purple. Hopefully it will stick to some of the areas. Just play around. Highlight certain areas with different colors. You could do this with gold. Whatever you want. Look at that, that is crazy. <laughs> I'll try a gold on this one. I'm not sure what this gold nail powder is like. I haven't really used it much. Yeah, a bit of uncured resin there. It's kind of like a borderline. You can you can slightly undercure or you can just miss that window and overcure completely. But with the handy torch you can just spot cure the area and carry it on and then just to make sure everything's solid I'm just going to give that a cure on full power under the magic cure and then just flip it over and cure the underside once they are fully cured you can then just peel them away look at that you could you could you could shape this how you want i mean if you do bigger sheets it would be easier because you could cut from anywhere pick your favorite areas of 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 the stuff what are we calling this i don't even know yet <laughs> give me some ideas in the comments what what should we call this i really don't know but that's absolutely incredible i'm not sure if i like the gold though but look at this alien creature thing. It really does look like some strange organic alien organism thingy majigami. <laughs> and it's got like tails and legs reaching out. You can, certain areas, you could snap it, pull it apart, put stuff aside. That looks like a heart. Looks like something strange anyway. But. This, I think, I want to work with this area here, definitely. But what I'll probably do is work with a few and just show you at the end, you get the idea, but I'll show you this one to begin with. Out comes my favorite jewelry mold. And now it's just picking, what am I going to put it in? And then commit to that. I mean, if you've got cabochons already made up, with different designs. You could always just lay something over the top to give you an outline and cut around that just to give you the shape. I think I'm going to go with this heart because I can utilize most of this. And imagine if I'd done that red, that would look crazy. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm just going to wing it and just trim off areas until I know it's gonna fit. And the good thing is, it's the same shape in reverse. And there it is, pretty much cut to size. Don't throw away any of the off cuts. Remember, you can hide these in different projects. Just cut them up really small if you're doing like black backgrounds, things like that. All I need to do now is fill my mold, not all the way, leave a small gap because you don't want it spilling over the sides when you insert the alien thing. <laughs> now I've just moved my mold off of that white mat so I can see any air bubbles a little bit better. Now I can take my alien thingy, whatever we're calling it, and place it on top. Now the surface tension should hold it in place, shouldn't sink, plus we've cut it to a good size. Hopefully we won't get any bubbles. You can lift it out and just keep manipulating it just to make sure there's no trap bubbles. 
but I'm just going to risk it. I might get one or two, you never know. Then I'm going to place my lamp over the top. Any bits that are sticking out, I can sort that, I can fix those afterwards. Just want to make sure that it's as level as it can be. So I'm just giving this a minute on both sides at 24 watts, no, 36 watts. Okay, so once that, <coughs> sorry, once that has cured, you have any option you want as to how you're going to back this. Let me just take this mask off. You, you can back this with any color you want. Again, you can dust it if you want. Just bear in mind that you want it to be a different color to what you've used that's gonna highlight the piece that's inside. I'm just going in with this ready color. And then all I'm going to do afterwards is just top that up again, just with the normal uh, black quick drip. I'm not going to put any PVA glue in because we don't need to now. The effect has already been done. And I'm only using the black quick drip because it's quicker for me. I really can't be bothered to just mix up some UV resin with black mica powder. That's what I'd normally do. But I would save the quick drip and color it black a different way. And again, just give that a minute cure. So I'm just working on another one and you're probably asking why I didn't use the mirror for the bottom of the lamp. I totally forgot because I'm not used to having it. <laughs> right, I'm all done. I've got another three to show you. This is the heart that we just made. Really, really crazy technique. Again, colour it however you like. As always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment. If you haven't subbed, hit that button for me. I used the one that reminded me of a heart with all the chambers and veins and stuff coming off. So different. Got a small bubble just there, caught in that gap. But you can barely see it. That is crazy. Right, the gold one, I wasn't gonna do, but I did it. It actually looks really good. I've got a small bubble in that one as well, but nothing to worry about. Oh, and there. <laughs> I just did a normal black background on that one. I didn't clean my mold properly. But it really is. Add something different. And this is one that I did with chameleon powders. Ignore the bezel, I don't know where I got that from. This is a bit more 3D, a bit more structured, more depth to it. It is absolutely crazy. Again, in the comments, hit me some ideas with uh, some for names for this. I really don't know where to where to start. Some of you have already called it the string effect. I don't know. Right, I hope you enjoyed that one. I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.